Hi, this is Brian Fogarty, and this is a video for chapter 13 of the book Quantitative Social Science Data with R, second edition. So in this video, which is the last of this chapter, we are going to uh, look at plotting predicted probabilities from a multinomial logit regression. Um, this, the code is, is pretty much identical to what we've used before uh, for doing these. The interpretation is a little bit different, so it's good to kind of walk through it. All right, so we're going to use the uh, ggpredict function again. So ggpredict, and then our model, model.mlogit. Uh, and then we are going to include the Scott variable on the x-axis. So we're going to do terms equals Scott. Okay, let's actually take a look at what names are generated, what's saved out of this when using um, mlogit. Okay, so we see here only four things are. Um, the thing that's missing that we've used before are the um, prediction intervals. The, which were named in it, what was it, conflow and confi. Um, so it's not automatically generated. We could we could do it a different way, but it's that's a lot of work, to be honest. And the other thing, as we'll see, is that um, including confidence intervals for some of these plots can really kind of muddy the picture. Um, and so we, we might decide, like, not even to do it even if we could because again it can it can complicate things all right so we see what that's what's available to us and then what I had already done is I went to um, I went further up in my R markdown file and grabbed code that we used before for doing the ggplot part just so that I, I don't need to type it all over again but we'll go we'll go through it here all right so we have ggpredict, we include the piping, we're going to do ggplot. Um, this is all the same, so if x equals x, that's corresponding to the Scott variable. Uh, we have y as predicted, and then color is response level, that is corresponding to the predicted probabilities for the different outcome variable values or categories. Um, we don't need fill because we do not have the uh, confidence interval slash prediction intervals. Okay, so we're using geom smooth again. The scale x continuous is the same. Um, the titles, the or the labels, we're going to change a little bit here. Now we're going to do predicted probabilities of partisan identification. We're not looking at trust partisan identification. Okay, uh, but then we on the X, we have strength of Scottish identity, Y, predictive probability, guides. Um, we just need color because we don't have a fill. All right, so I'm going to bring this up. And I'm going to change this. Instead of government trust, we're going to change it to PID. Okay, we're using theme minimal and veritas. Um, we don't need fill, right? So let's get rid of that. Let's see. Let's see. We'll find out if we do if if we need to do something differently <laughs> once we run this. Okay, I think that I think that's good. Okay, so let's uh, let's highlight all of it and run it. Yeah, that worked. Okay, so I'm gonna pop this out, drag it so it's a little bigger. Okay, so you could see what I was talking about with the confidence intervals, prediction intervals, how it can kind of make things messy here. Um, all right, there's a lot going on here. It's a pretty exciting looking plot. Um, we have our three lines. And each of the lines corresponds to the predicted probability of identifying with that party by the strength of Scottish identity. All right, so the purple line, purplish line, is identifying with conservatives. 
So we, you know, we can interpret this along the lines of as the strength of Scottish identity increases or becomes stronger, the predictive probability of identifying with the Conservative Party decreases. Um, for labor, it's a fairly interesting um, relationship here, right? We see that it goes up and then goes down. It's a, it's a very, you know, U-shape, hump shape, whatever. Um, so we might say um, as the strength of Scottish identity increases, the predictive probability of identifying with the, with labor increases until strength is at five. I mean, there's ways you would wordsmith this better than what I'm doing right now. Five or six, and then it goes down. Um, and then identifying what S&P is sort of the inverse of, of conservatives, right? The strength of identifying with, sorry, as the strength of Scottish identity increases, the predictive probability of identifying with the SNP increases. Um, we might also want to discuss kind of the endpoints, right? And say, so like respondents who have the weakest Scottish identity. So these are people that feel more British than Scottish. Um, conservatives have the highest predictive probability. S&P is the lowest. And then for people with the strongest Scottish identity, the S&P has uh, the highest predicted probability and conservatives have the lowest. Okay, so um, I also include in the chapter a way of adding a second variable that is a lot more code um, and it's it, it, there's a lot of nuance in interpreting it. Um, I'm gonna leave it I'm gonna leave it on the page instead of the video here. Uh, so that's it for this. Um, I'm gonna run the knit because of the last video we're gonna knit. Okay, uh, the file, this is going to take a while um, because we have some, we have a lot of stuff, but we also have that pause coming from the uh, multinomial probit. So I'm going to start the knit and pause the video and come back and we can look at the file. Okay, uh, I'm going to click knit and see you in a minute. Okay, so the knitting ran. Um, probably took about a minute. It's not too bad. Um, There's no errors. This is our output document, which is saved as a PDF in my working directory. Okay, so that is it for this video, the last one of chapter 13. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.